the moment. I'm pretty much like everything in yeah. my right pocket. The, the, so the pressure to oh, yeah. do all, and do all the like, things right, need all these standards. Oh, and, and they're not logging in. Good day, everybody. Hey. Hola. Hello. Come on, Stas, Dad. I don't know how to fly to that. <laughs> <laughs> Un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah, you could ask him another thing now. Then you're <laughs> Justin, is the session still running? No Russian, okay. Don't, don't they start controlling remoto? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the remote control? <laughs> but you know, that's where the whole threat intel piece comes with. Mm. Like, how are you actually standing up the threat intel capability as a separate aggregation? Well, we're thing. pulling in IOCs what? from incidents we see as well. Mm -hmm. And then also what we're seeing in cross <laughs> Ooh. We're a mic. We were here all, all weekend on the start of weekend. So. But yeah, so yeah. we're looking at it from even and we'll be perspective here in of, okay, we've, we've seen a whole yeah. bunch of Bruce Sports attacks against one client on, say, SSH. Let's blacklist that IP on For all, all clients. clients. Agreed. Agreed. That That's, well, quite frankly, that's what <coughs> I buy in a managed yeah. service. I'm not paying you to protect my environment. I'm paying you to only. Mm. You are protecting my environment based on your service. Right. Yeah, it's and a threat intel. It's the matrix. It's yeah, and you know, it's it. As a customer, it's super hard to get that transparency because they're doing lots of good stuff the, uh, in the sock. But I was like, where, the where are you telling me you that you're doing that? Party, How are you showing me you're? I'm, I'm getting, getting that value because that's what I'm paying. For. Yeah, yeah. What's so the oh, it's the interesting. Thing, you, um, um, the biggest problem we have at the end of the incident. But then like Debbie cracked open all the gyms, so they start getting into the gyms. You're the superhero. <laughs> no, they point, should Sharon just be writing like checks for you to take over the environment. That's not yeah. how it works. And I'm like, hey, I and just called and I said, hey, you think? Thousands of instances I've done door. in the last three years. <laughs> like, they were all We've got about a one in 100 conversion half, ratio. And I'm like, I had to, to drive, full. so I'm like, I just had to, to more more managers. Yeah. Oh, and I was out of there. And so yeah. Yeah. we're looking at the moment. Okay, what's, I am, I totally uh, what's an entry point? But also delivers value. I knew going there is just going to be like a night fest in a while. Because you want to know how much shadow IT is going Stuff like that just pulls You want to know. Um, what are some of the threats that are being seen in the right environment and what was the we response? The to I, think, I, think, I think we're um, on the mics right now, but it's just... Yeah, yeah see, so it is it, interesting people because the together. findings I guess, through cause you know, analysis you're, you're in a of the incident now, right, of are, are all remediation be, opportunities. Here, right? Yeah, and you're so remediation opportunities are projects. Yeah, 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 yeah. License to print money at that point in time, right? But then remediation projects are still in point of time. I'm going to start the session and just talk over to Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to a DigiTrack 21 event. So this is a panel discussion um, about where is IT. Um, before we start the session, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Um, I'm now going to hand over to David Ruddock and he's going to run the session for you today. Enjoy. Cool. Um, thanks, guys. Um, for those that don't know me, my name's David Ruddock. I'm the founder and managing director of a cybersecurity consultancy firm based here on the Gold Coast. Um, Matthew Eames, who was meant to be your original panel host, uh, got man flu, and so I got roped in. I apologise for that in advance. Um, but with us today, we have uh, Matthew from the Gold Coast City Council, uh, Adam from Paul Secure... Hall. Paul. <laughs> Sorry, there's another McCarthy I deal with from Paraflare. Oh. And I confuse you guys all, this, all, all the time because of your surname. And Steve uh, from Refactor. Refactor. Um, yeah. But we're going to start and try and make this as organic as possible. But we also, uh, we were joking about this before in the fact that IT people are typically introverted. And what we do want is engagement. Um, we would like you guys at some point, if you've got questions, let us know. Um, because the whole idea here is to help you guys work out um, what pathway you should be taking to, to get into IT or cybersecurity, um, and you have a, a panel of experts who are doing that um, and an opportunity to ask them, so please go for it. But I want to start with, with Matthew, and we were talking beforehand of um, what was your career, a, a career pathway of getting to where you are now? I, I was thinking about this, uh, kind of reflecting on my my career history, I guess. And it was an event almost exactly like this where, um, where I was introduced to some people and that led to an interview and I got a job as a junior network analyst 
so my training was in network engineering uh, from an institution, uh, an identical institution to TAFE in Canada. It's called NATE, uh, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. And um, that job was a trial by fire. It was, right. it was a consulting firm. They were doing network engineering on power plants. Um, so it was right into the deep end of industrial control systems, uh, which I had absolutely zero idea what was going on. And, uh, but you worked there, it out, I'm assuming. But there was a point. team around that, right? There was a team around that of, of people that had been seasoned and, and, and were, they were running a consulting business to do this. So I, I had a little bit of guidance, but what, what I re really reflected on was it, it was a challenge to really just get out there and do some stuff and went on some insane trips with, uh, you know, a senior consultant to middle of nowhere, Wyoming to work on a power plant and learn so much about networking just in a span of one or two years. And when I reflect on that, that trial by fire, so to say, was probably the equivalent of five years of education. So you were thrown into the deep end, forced to survive, but that actually helped you grow <laughs> yeah. rapidly. There, there was there was an there was enough rope that you wouldn't hang yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you had the support mechanism. Yeah, because yeah, it yeah. was there, and obviously they're in it to provide a service, so they have to have happy clients, so they can't just not have happy clients. So uh, I was really reflecting on that, and and it was challenging, but it really set me up because from there I was able to to move laterally a little bit, and I went into the industry and worked at a utility, at a trend power transmission company. Yeah, yeah. And because I had that background, I suddenly, I suddenly was an expert. It's like they had nobody that knew mm -hmm. networking and industrial control systems, and suddenly I took that and I was an expert. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, am I, I, that's crazy. It's like three or four years of experience, and suddenly I'm the person telling people how to design their network. It was pretty outstanding. Um, obviously, there's you learn a lot too about how organizations work and the engineering discipline in that kind of environment. But long and the short of it, I think, you know, the challenge really made you rise to it. And if, if you did, it was just, it was there. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of how I got started. And then from there, I just kind of kept going down the network security bandwagon and ended up then leading a team of IT professionals doing IT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the Coles Notes version. Of, sorry, that's Canadianism. The Canadianism. Okay. <laughs> that's the abridged version of my career path. Coles? Uh, it's, uh, I'm waiting for the, the, the uh, subtitles down below <laughs> that translates. Yeah. No, that it's just. Where's, where's the LCD when you want to? <laughs> that's I've the, heard that's that the once before, and I had no idea what it was it, the first time. It's just a. <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm what's not going to explain it. The abridged version. The abridged the version. There's, 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 there's a whole other brand in the States, too. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the wow. United States. I didn't, know there was, I didn't know there was a Canadian one. Right on. So that, that's the summary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the summary in general. Okay, we can we'll, get more we'll, in, we'll, into we'll it. Dig it. We'll dig a little bit further that. Paul. Very good. Paul McCarty. McCarty. No, no, no H. No H. No H. No. I'll remember that for future. It's all good, man. So what's your story? I mean, it's kind of similar to Matt's. Um, He's Canadian. I'm from Detroit, which is kind of southern Canada. Yeah. Um, in, fa in, fact, Canada. in fact, in fact, if you if you look at a map, uh, if you look at a map, actually Detroit is north of Canada. Seriously. Oh, because yeah. of the way the because yeah, of the way yeah, yeah because Ontario comes down and Windsor is down there, right? Detroit is yeah. Anyhow, um, technically north of Canada, a little teeny bit of it. Um, you love no, that story, don't you? I, dude, I love that story. I've been telling that story <laughs> a long time. Um, right. I got lots of great stories, David. Um, so one of those is how I started in IT. I went to uh, Wayne State University in, in Detroit, Michigan, and um, did not like my classes very much um, because, you know, I, I went to university in the first year in university. I didn't get to do any of the cool stuff that you guys got to do, right? I was taking intro to English lit. Even though I was a computer science major, I was taking intro to, you know, English literature and all this kind of stuff and bored out of my mind. I got a job in the computer lab, Ooh. and my life changed. And this would have been 1991. One. I was trying to figure. <laughs> it might have, I think it was ninety one. I was trying to do the math in my head. Um, but it's great. Um, I started learning how to hack on Solaris. So, this is pre Solaris, Sun OS and Vax VMS. Um, and this was at the advent of TCP/IP. I, I shit you not. It was at the, it was it was at, at the beginning of of kind of the networking world that we just kind of take for granted now. And I had to figure out how to hack my way onto the fledgling internet um, using um, Gopher. 
and finger. Were you see slipping back then? And... I, it, it was lots of gophering. It was like hopping, hopping from one gopher to another. But anyhow, it, it kind of lit up. No idea. We no idea. <laughs> <laughs> look, it up, look it up, gopher. It's awesome. That was kind of the precursor to um, Telnet and, and then SSH. But anyhow, the point is that that lit a fire. Um, I moved out west to Utah and I started my own computer store. I said, hey, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go to university. I'm going to start my own computer store in ISP. And that was 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that evolved into a Unix consultancy in the 90s. Um, and then I got into, before DevOps was a thing we called a platform. Yep. I was a platform admin and um, for a large insurance company. And then for Boeing, NASA, JPL, the Army Ballistics Lab, I've had a lot of kind of um, government type jobs. And um, my specialty over time became um, orchestrating security tools at scale. Yeah, wow. Right, and it started out really with um, the precursor for OSEC way back in the day, so IDS, intrusion detection. That's kind of what I started doing for people, and, and here we are 20-some years later, and, and um, I'm doing it in the cloud. But you're running your own company now. I mean, um, yeah, sorry, Matt's, he's filling in all these gaps for me. Yeah, I started a company in 2017 called SecureStack that helps customers do that, and our, our focus has become applications now, um, because in a, in a cloud-native world, it's not about servers anymore, it's about your apps. Everything's right? an app. So what I ask my customers, what pays your mortgage? Is it a server or is it an application, right? And it's an app, so our focus is on the app, and helping people understand where the app is running, vulnerabilities across the whole of its, its um, life cycle, and, and that's what we're doing now, and very successful. We raised a seed round in 2020, and it's on like Donkey Kong. Isn't it that the weird group that does like the magic quadrant report and stuff says that you guys are an interesting, <laughs> interesting company to uh, follow? Where I, as far as I know, we're not in the Gartner quadrant. We are. We were. Uh, we were named to a in Forbes quadrant. Oh, we're in, so we're, we're, oh, yeah, we're on the <laughs> Forbes um, top twenty cybersecurity startups to watch in twenty twenty one. So, yeah, the, the Monday that I woke up and got that news was a good Monday. <laughs> Yeah, it hit my LinkedIn shortly after, so your VA is doing an amazing job. Damn right. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I didn't so even get to the VA. You're at the top. You're still doing your own marketing, so there you go. We just got added to another um, top 100 cyber list, too, as well. So it's it's been a good uh, year, for, yeah, for sure. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Steve? Oh, gosh, where do I start? I... Um, I had finished high school in 1992. I was just thinking about this. And uh, is that right? Yeah, and um, it's kind of a recession in the UK at the time. Uh, you guys probably don't know recessions, but I've had two or three recessions through my life. And, We're uh, very lucky was, here in Australia. It was a pretty hard recession, so a great time to start uni. And uh, I wanted to do, uh, I actually was really interested in renewable energy and solar panels when, way before anyone really was interested in it. And so I went and did electrical engineering, electronic engineering, and that was what I was going to do. I was a grade A student, I was good at maths, computers, um, science and the electronics engineering kind of work. So I went to uni, uh, really good UK uni, to be an engineer. And um, yeah, I kind of uh, loved it. But then after a couple of years, I was flunking all my classes because I was just mucking about and you know being a student and loving being a student too much. So uh, my, my tutor just said, uh, you should just take a year off and just go do an internship and do something totally different. So I just so happened to see an ad for a, a lab in the UK for, with IBM, a software development lab and got thrown into um, what was kind of a cool time to be at IBM. Not these days, IBM isn't so <laughs> cool and sexy. In a, in a software lab um, in IBM with a lot of really long gray beard guys and really got heavily into Unix and lots of all sorts of systems that I had no idea were even existed. And um, a really fortuitous event happened that halfway through that year, which might sound really horrible because of uh, the recession hit in the US uh, in, in ways they decided, IBM said, we're gonna close all the labs everywhere around the world. We had worldwide labs, apart from, I think, one in Santa Clara in the US. So we, everyone in my uh, whole department, 300 people, got retrenched. But there was about 40 students that were on internships that they didn't know what to do with. So they put the word out to IBM and said, um, you have a student for free. And I ended up getting seconded to a team into IBM Global Network, which was a corporate precursor to the internet at the time. It became part of the internet and uh, ended up doing a job way above what I was supposed to be doing that they should have probably had a grad in and really like excelled in that and uh, really that was kind of this weird event that really propelled me away from electronics into IT. Uh, so then went back to uni, like blitzed uni, dropped all my electronics courses that I was doing shit in, chose software, did image processing, uh, did some AI, early AI 
and just basically totally flipped into IT and did um, and ended up working with 3Com after a uni. Yeah, right. Even though IBM was really keen to have me back, uh, I went to 3Com and wrote um, agent software, they called it then, which is like routers and switches, the, the software, the embedded software that runs so on So were you responsible for router. my crappy 5600 BPS modem? Is yeah, this? I didn't do modems. This, we were this would the, have been before We were on the, the, like the more, um, you know, corporate switches and things like that. Yeah, wow. But yeah, that, that was another part of 3Com that bought US Robotics. That's so right. yeah, that really threw me into, uh, I guess, networking. I uh, worked on some really cool stuff. And I'll just finish with this, because uh, I don't want to fill in all the gaps since then. But, you know, I was very, very fortuitous, I guess, to have lived at a time where I started my career. I entered a graduate training scheme, and I had uh, two years to become what's called a chartered engineer in the UK. And they put me through, I think, some like 60 training courses. I had to keep blog books. I had a weekly mentor. That's really what, like, turned me into me. And I think I, I'm really sad that that doesn't really exist anymore because that was an amazing experience. The Maybe structured just, approach. Of the structured graduate training scheme that I went through really was amazing. And I think the world mm. has changed. And I guess this is maybe what we're going to talk about today. The world has changed somewhat, especially in Australia. I think those things don't exist anymore, which it was just a sad thing. But obviously a very expensive thing to do that thing back then. But it produced a lot of really amazing engineers. Well, and I mean, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, maybe maybe some of that will come back. Who knows? In a different form. But I was going to say, like you're spot on. Um, one of the biggest problems we have in the industry, and they say it all the time, is that we don't have enough. We don't have enough people going into the industry. But then businesses complain when they're listing mm. up for for positions. I want someone with five years' experience. I want this. I want that. And I was talking to Karen b before all of this, and um, one of the amazing things that. I went through TAFE and then I went through uni and I kind of like you, I found uni boring. Um, I think you found it boring, but um, the, the stuff I learned from TAFE because of the hands-on approach and everything else, like when we're hiring, I'll look at, you know, what's the, what's the skills behind it, but the, what's the roadmap from it? I think we as industry have to think about how do we apply that, that roadmap forward? And I guess leading on from there, what's, and we we're just discussing, you're taking a couple of the, um, the cyber interns. Mm -hmm. What are you guys sort of trying to do with that roadmap? Yeah, interesting, because uh, I um, had a, an intern from TAFE a while back. He was uh, Italian. He had to uh, sadly go back to Italy because he had some Matteo. visa issues. Matteo. Matteo. It was awesome. But uh, when he was um, going for his visa, I had to come up with a structured training plan for him. And I hadn't actually written one of those in years. And I'm like... And I'm thinking back to my old days. I'm like, I have to actually actually wrote a two-year structured training plan for him as a traineeship. And I'm like, this is actually pretty good, you know. And I listed off all the things I think you should need, and after you've graduated, to do this training plan. I still have it. I should really work on it more and get my guys through it. But uh, I don't think enough people do that. Think about like uh, what is the plan, right? Because yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of this just get thrown into it. And uh, there is also some merit to the whole you know throw people into the fire and just go for it as well but you need both i think having a bit of structure is quite good and i think a lot of the because companies are smaller now and there's a lot of startups and a lot of people are just doing things in a somewhat gung-ho fashion we maybe that's where we need to help people with do, do uh, to, to do that i don't know it's just a random thought bubble there th that yeah. is a good thought bubble because yeah. it's something that um we were talking david and i were talking about earlier is that um entrepreneurship especially as observe as an outside observing in entrepreneurship in australia is a real thing mm -hmm. it, it, it's in north america it's very corporatized yeah and, and so it is harder it, it, you might maybe in canada maybe you might you <laughs> might just you might disagree with me i feel like australians have this entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit that is quite pervasive and and i'm actually sitting with three entrepreneurs right I'm, I'm, I, my career path never went the entrepreneurial way. I'm, I'm, a, I'm currently working for a large bureaucratic government organization. And the, the, coming back to your point, though, is what is our job in providing that structure? It seems like you know, the government or whatever those programs existed, whether they were accreditation institutes or governments, have withdrawn their support for those yeah. structured training yeah. programs. It's actually our job now. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So then... Um, you know, as a IT leader, what what should I be constructing in my business cases for 
junior, intermediate, senior positions, training pathways, career pathways through my organization. And, Same mm -hmm. thing for all of us, though, just at different scales. And also understanding, too, Matt, that, that when you do that, and, and I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of that, and we can talk about how many employees that I have and how many employees Steve has that came out of this TAFE, but, um, and how many interns have come out of this TAFE. But when you do that, Matt, you have to also understand, and you, I'm sure you do, that, that that has a overhead, right? That overhead yeah. of bringing on people and trying to give back has an overhead on your business, right? Yeah, and not just financial either. It's it's time. It's time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Time is the most important thing. The, the money is less of a concern, but it's definitely And I think, time. going to your point, there's a bit of an education down the track too. Like sometimes I've got clients to do, right? And sometimes I have to say to them, hey, can I put a junior on this? Yeah. And I've got a junior. And sometimes they'll be like, no, we can't. And they don't understand the fact I'm trying to develop young people as well. And they've, I guess they've outsourced their development to companies like myself. They don't understand what it's like to actually develop junior staff. Anymore. A anymore, yeah. They used to. They, they, yeah, they would have had these structured programs. So I guess um, negotiating that with your clients sometimes can be uh, interesting. Uh, you know, often it's about money that you just have to give them some discount or something, or you know, you last some extra hours. But some clients I've had have just said, "No, we just want we want uh, my business partner Rob is like a gun, right?" They're like, "No, nah, we want no one except for Rob on it. That's it. It has to be yeah. Rob. He's the senior. Like we just don't want to muck about with do anyone." Do you do tiered who's... pricing? We're going. We're getting into yeah. commercials here, but do you do tiered pricing? Because the way. Yeah. Um, so my backstory, very, very quickly. Yeah, we didn't do you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew was asking me before. I'm going to ask you. Um, I'm now going to interject and, and tell you my story anyway. doesn't mm. start off very pretty. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I actually worked. I, I ran bulletin boards when I was 16. Um, we, uh, yeah, yes. um, we shared hacking, virus, cracking, anarchy, and um, you know, HBABC stuff. Um, really cool fun. Uh, I won't go any further with that. However, um, I then went and put viruses on the school computers. I got the moral to the story there is don't leave the evidence in your locker because I got caught. <laughs> um, and then I got led by one of the, the um, lecturers at school to try and apply to learn a program. Fast forward a little bit, I couldn't get a job. No one would hire me because I didn't have commercial experience. Um, and kind of like you, I started up a computer, my own little computer business, I was selling computers. And then uh, a friend of mine uh, told me about a superannuation administration firm in Southport that um, his girlfriend worked at who had virus problems all the time. And I went in and met with them um, to help tidy up the environment. And uh, I remember sheepishly telling him, you know, I, I, I'd like 20 bucks an hour. And he had a glint in his eye and I know why now. <laughs> um, he should have asked for $100 an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm still friends with him. He's 90. And um, I asked him recently, why did he hire me? He said, it was cheap. Um, <laughs> but Sometimes um, that's the way in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's Apparently, but you shouldn't. But, yeah. But um, I started my... is doing a bit of that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I... Um, I started my business because to be honest, I was a lazy uni student and I didn't want to work and I wanted to employ other people to do the job for me. Um, fast forward a few years, I hired my first employee and suddenly I had this responsibility that I had to pay someone else. I had to find the money to pay someone else. And so I had to take this, this business thing seriously. Um, now, ironically, I think because of that pathway, I look at people who are coming through, I'm less interested in uh, their, their professional experience. Like I've, I've literally in the last three years built out a cyber incident response and digital forensics team out of nothing. Um, we won an award um, from an, uh, we won an award from the Australian Computer Society that introduced us to the insurance industry. Um, we became the major panelist for cyber incident response for this cyber insurer in Australia. Um, between now and then we've probably done a thousand incidents. Um, I raced off and, and got my digital forensics um, certifications and everything else because I thought, well, crap, I'm now getting paid to do this. I better make sure I actually know how to do it. Um, so trial by fire. And, um, and as of April the 1st, we're now acquired by that company. They're a billion dollar company. Um, and I'm going to be stealing more interns to give them an opportunity because I, I, I can go out to the cyber CXs of the world and I can find 150, 200K a year experts who can do things but there's a different mindset. Whereas I can get really interested young guys and girls and, and, and all the rest of it. And if they're passionate about it, they've got a bit of skill, um, they dabble in stuff, I can train them. And, and I think 
to your point of, yeah, it's now our responsibility. Of course it is, because it's our future. Like it's the future workforce that we're going to work and employ. And it's also um, future entrepreneurs who are going to spin up other organizations. So. Uh I think I think hustle uh, hustle gets overused in the startup world. Right? Yeah. It's becoming one of those. I'm almost at the point where I don't use it anymore. But for me, being the east side of Detroit, hustle is the number one thing that I, I look for in people. Right. I don't look for you know what what college degree you have necessarily. I don't look for you know what awards you won. I look for hustle, and that's that's an easy enough mm -hmm. thing to discern when you talk to somebody for five minutes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's a big thing to to say to you, you know people in the audience tonight. It's hustle, work hard. You know, like that's that's the most important thing to put in your resume, straight up. Yeah, um, I, I think an interesting thing might be to ask is, what are you hustling for? Why are you hustling? That's a good point. Um, you know, is it just about the money? Is yeah, because you're passionate about it. And and um, agreed. And what what are you passionate about? You're like really, really think about that a little bit too, because um, getting up in the morning can be a little hard. Yeah. So so what are what are you doing that motivates you intrinsically and sometimes it's a little bit of a mental game um, but I think that you can define that quite concretely and it's one of the reasons why kind of I think that my hustle was about having a good vision for what I was doing so uh, the experience that I gained in doing security on power plants when I was a little younger and more naive about what that actually meant coalesce into this idea that if you're doing that at scale you're actually protecting society hmm. and that that big idea of having a really compelling reason why you are hustling is actually very motivating intrinsically right and then because you're motivated intrinsically people feed off that people around you people that you're talking to people that you're going to an interview for they feed off that intrinsic motivation that you have. Yeah. And therefore they say, oh, that person switched on. There's a, a lot of really good um, thought leader books and all that. They talk about what is your why? And you, you've just come up with that. You know, what is, what is the reason you get up every day? And it's, it does make it a lot easier to get up every day and do something if, if you have a focus, if you have a why. And your why can be your family. You know, it, it, can, be. it, it can be something as simple as that. Or it could be, in your case, I want to I want to help defend these industrial control systems because I understand it. And I know the impact it can have. Um, I, I'm going to sort of go with that and colonial pipeline, right? That's yeah, a, yeah, that's a perfect segue into colonial <coughs> pipeline. Right? Yeah, exactly. That, when that hit the news, that's like a golden ticket, Who, right? Right to the board. <laughs> has, has everybody heard about the colonial pipe pipeline that got shut down in the states? Yep. Yeah, right on. Anyone not heard about it? Anybody not heard? So it. Who's going to ask? Ah, uh, uh, you got to go now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've been in, you... to joke, I've been in interviews, uh, one of my bosses, he's had interviews and the person sat down in the interview and they've said, uh, he said, oh, you heard about like what's happened with Salesforce or something, Salesforce acquired someone, and the interview, he said, uh, what's Salesforce? And he literally has ended the interview right really? there and then, <laughs> which is really mean. Uh, I know that's quite mean, but like, so, that's, that's a joke yeah, move. like, uh, I'm not saying you guys shouldn't know about the kind of You guys stay there. Stay there. Like, yeah. uh, can, can I at least say you good. do look up the name of the yeah. business yeah, and that just, you're going for an interview yeah. with? Because if, if the business <laughs> says to you, have you, do, what do you know about us? And you say, I don't know anything. <laughs> I have entered, ended interviews on that purpose. Yeah, because so, I'm like, well, shit, you're applying for a job here. So yeah, but uh, yeah, what, what being I was just gonna say, being knowing what's going on in the world, right around you. Yeah, um, but I'm that, not, I wasn't having a go with those two yeah. people there. It just popped into my head. Yeah, but that okay, that sorry. why that why like kind of yeah. whatever it is, in, in like using this example of security mm -hmm. and and uh, national infrastructure, national infrastructure of interest, mm -hmm. um, that that can be compelling, right? And whatever it is, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be security. It could be could be innovation, could be optimization, could be your family, could be whatever it is. Really think about that and coalesce it a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I think the word hustle has a stigma to it now. I think what we're really talking about is passion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like I, I get up in the morning stoked to do my job. I'm also a little overwhelmed, but um, more than a little overwhelmed. But I'm stoked to do my job because I love it, right? Because yeah. I have a passion for it. It breaks and that's my heart when I hear people who say, I hate my job. Oh, God. Yeah, like, what are you How long doing? have you hated your job for? I don't know, that's five years. I'm like, oh, my goodness me. I love my job. 
Yeah. I feel really, really sad uh, that you hate your job. That makes me almost want to cry, right? There, there's you know, like, <laughs> there, there are certain times, though, when, when it's okay to hate your job, uh, yeah. I'll say. Like, uh, like not over a period of a long time and they haven't done no, anything no. about so it. No, I'll, I'll no, use, I'll use myself. You work, you work for that um, heart, the, the thing the that bu- you took. The yeah, bureaucratic. I'll, I can, I can <laughs> talk. Evil core. I can, <laughs> I can talk bad about council because I work cool? at council. Um, no, this I'm, is recorded and streamed. I have a lot of friends <laughs> at council. We love the council. <laughs> no, I, I won't talk about council yet. Um, I will talk about um, when I was working for that consulting firm. I started to hate my job. And, and the reason why I hated my job is that my, my passions weren't intersecting correctly. I was, I was doing security on critical infrastructure, but I was traveling way too much and yeah. sacrificing mm-hmm. family, right? So I actually started to hate it. And uh, I realized that if I wanted to keep doing the thing I was passionate about, I had to get a different job. I just ha- I had to, right? Uh, the, the nature of that consulting work required me to travel to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to middle of nowhere, power, coal power plant, Wyoming. Good news, we, we can't travel at the moment. It's yes. Um, small problem. Small problem. But, you know, so my, my interests weren't intersecting. So I did hate it at a time, but I didn't hate the passion. I just hated the circumstance. Yeah. So then I changed that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I similarly in the in the mid two thousands, I really liked snowboarding. I learned how to snowboard in the late nineties, right? And in the in the mid two thousands, I was cashed up from selling my business, and I was like, I'm gonna go become a professional snow, snowboarder, right? <laughs> and it was great. It was great. I got really good really quickly. You can find me. On, you can find me on YouTube. But the thing is that to your point, like doing that, what was my passion? Right, it kind of ruined my passion because then it became my job. It kept, became a job, and yeah. Then, and I realized if I want to keep loving snowboarding, because you don't make any money snowboarding. You travel the world and that's great, but you make no money doing yeah. it. You, whatever little money gets you to the next hemisphere, right, to do the next winter. So I realized I have to go back to IT, which I love, so I can do snowboarding as this separate passion. Yeah, it becomes so, your hobby, your, 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 the kicks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I mean, I, that, I didn't want to do that for a living anymore. So what, what is your why? Why do you get up every day? Well, one, I have a startup and I need to make my startup successful, right? Because we're driving around in a 2007 Subaru Forester and, you know, and, and my family is suffering because we're, you know, I'm paying myself less than market salary. Basically, everybody that works for me makes more than I do. Yeah, I've been there. Because that's, I was there that's for the model. Fifteen years, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Matt doesn't have that problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> working a council. <laughs> but, but. Yeah, someone said that to me the other day. They're saying there's this common mis- uh, misperception by people that the boss is always like super rich, right? Oh yeah. But yeah. often the you know the founder eats last, right? Yeah. Is, is a common thing. It, it doesn't always. I, hopefully, you get out of that. But when you have uh, investors you know. and you have, <laughs> when we have other shareholders, um, you know that's that's an easy way to save money is to not pay yourself market rate. So to your question, what's my, my why? I have to make this successful, right? Because yeah. I'm in my late forties and you know, I'm not going to necessarily get another try. So this has to be successful. So I get up, I got up today literally at four thirty, because I just, I was sitting there in bed thinking I need to do this, this, and this, and this let's go. Yeah. But don't let, um, for anyone who's thinking, you know, they've got a great idea and they're thinking about entrepreneurship. Don't let that discourage you. Totally. Let it discourage you. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> totally let it discourage you. <laughs> no, like, my, services but, business is a totally different thing. I'm product. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not product and services is a, is a good segue, but why? Why well, are you saying I, that? I, I did the same for 15 years. I nearly lost my business 10 years ago. Um, I I thought we were making. I won't go into the long details. I thought we were making a profit. We weren't. There's a whole story behind that. If you want to know, it's in the paper. I'm happy to tell it. Um, I had two options. One was go take a really high paying job in Canberra that I was offered or mortgage myself to the hilt, pay off my huge debt to the ATO and keep going with it. And I, and I took the latter because I loved my oh. team. I loved what we were doing. Um, and not trying to big note myself, but now, now I've sold my company kind of like you have as well. And I now feel like, hey, I've actually achieved something really good. But that took a lot of effort. And there, there's many points that I could have exited. Like I, I could have turned around and gone, F this, I'm out. I'll go. I'll, I'll go get a job mm-hmm. for a big company. Um, they talk about you see successful people. You only see them when they're successful. Yep. And there's all of this, like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're preaching it right now. Like, there's all of this that goes on behind the scenes where people fail a million times first, but then they get there in the end. 
And so if you do have a really good idea and if, if you go out and, and you work in an industry and you come up with an idea that doesn't exist and you want to create it, give it a shot. For sure. Um, it may not work and that's cool too. It's, it's cool to fail. Like we encourage failure in mm-hmm. our organization because good things come from it. Yep. Um, but eventually you could be successful too or you could just learn a whole heap of really cool shit along the way. So, so there's two statistics. The first is that 91% of startups fail. Yeah. 91%. However, if you're a second time founder, your failure rate is less than 50%. Because you've hopefully learned some lessons. Because you've learned way. something, yeah. hopefully. And if not, if you're you probably a, gonna fail again, but. I think if you have a co-founder, it's like the, the rates go even, you know, even better, right? Well, that's you because have, you, you, have you, have trusted, you have a trusted partner. You, right? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, co-founders, for a first time founder, co-founders don't affect. No, 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 but I think on the second one. On the one, second yeah, one, that's correct, yeah. 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 So, I was going. I was just interested as to how many people actually are thinking about an entrepreneurial path. It doesn't have to be right away while you're <laughs> at tape, but is that something people see themselves possibly doing, or is a few uh, yeah, few hands? Is this a uh, quick response? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm asking you guys. You're, yeah, you're yeah, the yeah. interactive audience. Because because we could harp on about startups and you guys could not care, and we're going to waste all our time. Yeah, exactly. Startups. Good point. If you but, don't want to hear about like, startups, if you're interested, like I just did Startup Weekend this weekend. It was actually here in this room. I don't know if anyone. I was a mentor. Yeah, so, um, but one of the things that happens at Startup Weekend often, you get a ton of people pitching on the Friday night where 24 people pitch their ideas. I think nine or seven, eight or nine of them were picked. And then at the end of it, I think seven teams finished and pitched. And Sunday night, you know, there was a winner picked. But there's a, a lot of people want to be the founder, putting the idea forward, and less people want to follow someone else so mm. i find this quite a bit everyone there's a lot of soul founders around who were just having a go yet if i was to say to them why don't you like i don't think your idea has actually got legs but that guy over there really needs a tech co-founder or, or needs some help like go and help that person sometimes that, there's reticence to do that so i think maybe we need more people involved in startups but maybe not everyone has to be a founder yeah so 100%. i think there's lots of people around there doing it hard trying to find found companies and some of them have got amazing ideas but they don't have the technical people and so you know make, look around and see what's going on around you don't feel like because you want to be an entrepreneur you have to start something my first two startups were not me as the founder they were when i um joined in 2000 which was already established which had some funding they had two or three million bucks it, it ultimately failed but i Kept to, to, went along for the ride with them. It was very interesting. And then the second one, I was kind of brought in as a tech co-founder a little bit later. It was an advertising executive who had this idea in his mind. Uh, that one also didn't continue, but that was that was a really amazing experience for me just to be involved. But they weren't. None of them were my ideas. No, but while you were involved, yeah. although the entrepreneurship might have ultimately not been successful, it paid the bills yep. while you were there. Mm-hmm. You learned a heap of stuff about how that organization worked and what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And you took all that forward, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 anyway, that's just an option. And particularly here on the Gold Coast, where we don't have a lot of big companies. You know, Gold Coast City Council, I think, is the biggest employer on the coast, or one yeah. of them. Village not a lot of, not a lot of big companies. There are a lot of little kind of startups or small businesses, you know, in the sort of five to tens. And, you know, look around and see what there is. It might not be fantastic money, well, like starting off, but you'll get, you'll get a heap of experience. Um, the remote, so work, the remote working thing has <laughs> yes, changed that landscape absolutely, too, yeah, right? Yeah. 100%. I've so. got a friend who got a job actually in cyber. Um, um, he responded to a job years ago. Did I tell you this story? On Reddit. There's actually a Reddit job ad for Metasploit. <laughs> and he oh, ended up being the Metasploit uh, community manager. And That's he amazing. was here, he lives in uh, Sunshine Coast, and he went on every single podcast for a year talking about Metasploit, and then he ended up uh, starting his own cyber business in the end. But uh, he pivoted away from doing, you know, basically .NET developer at Suncorp into being this cyber guy. Uh, this is OJ Reeves, I don't know if you know OJ. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he did it, he got that, he just responded to a job on, on Reddit. And this is before the whole what's happened with COVID the and work the remote from home thing. Stuff, yeah. uh, but that, fortunately, that was a job he could do from anywhere in the world. Now you've got like a thousand times more opportunities like that that you could apply for a company in you know Lithuania or somewhere. Well, pick or, any country, or right? even just Sydney, right? You know, yeah, 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 even Sydney, but, <laughs> even just Sydney, but, you know, <laughs> Melbourne. But, but the guy, the guy in the white had a question about Sorry, entrepreneurship. I, w- yeah. I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, to yeah, remember your yeah. question. Still interesting to hear about it. <laughs> Structure in my head as I go to it, but 
But uh, my question would be, it sounds like you guys had some kind of previous experience before you could even think about the idea of what you wanted to do for a startup. So I like jumping on board with someone else. It's mm -hmm. a great experience. But more of what um, would be great for me to know is everyone going into cloud computing at the moment for mm -hmm. what I've been able to find. So what would make me more attractive when I go to an interview as a cert? Like, uh, should I head towards Azure or should I head towards AWS? Is C and double A plus like I, I always get everyone to do the AWS Solutions Architect uh, course. It's only like maybe 20 hours of study or whatever and uh, $200 for the exam. It's pretty good. And that will, once you've done that, you can kind of do Azure and GCP and all the other ones as well. So I usually start with that because it's pretty cheap. I think there's a fair amount of surveys out there that says it's like the best cert for, you know, bang for book. It's, it's not perfect, but... That's the one I get people to do. Uh, I think it should just be taught in TAFEs like it is, like the Cisco one is, you know, it just should be a default. Sorry, Paul, go on. You were gonna no, say no, something. I mean, I, I agree with yeah. you. I think the solutions architect is a little bit, I think it's a little bit harder than, than because he's, he's an AWS, you know, guru, so it's easy for him. I would start actually with the cloud prac, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I would start with the AWS yes. cloud prac. Then I would go and take the equivalent in Azure, which is called Azure Essentials. Both of them are essentially free and they do the train. You can go to AWS and they'll give you the training for free. You don't have to do the exam if you don't want to as well, but right? The, the exam is kind of good just to stick it on your resume. It's another totally. line item, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, people, it, yeah. Sorry. Well, David, actually, on that point, I was going to say, everyone in this room who's studying now has to accept if you want this to be a profession, your study doesn't stop here. Yeah. Um, and 10 years ago when I nearly lost the company, we were paying people big money. They had their MCSC and all that, but it was like expired and, and not relevant anymore. And there was no motivation for them to continue their, their learning. Mm -hmm. Things are advancing so quickly in our industry. You're talking about cloud, it's not that old really. Um, when you look at things from a time scale and, and you know, human life perspective. Um, we now have a continued professional development requirement for all of our staff mm -hmm. because the moment they stop continually learning, sorry, they're useless to me yeah. because there's someone else out there who's learning faster than them. There's, there's a trick they haven't learnt yet. And I think this comes back to we as IT professionals, infosec professionals, software developer professionals, unfortunately have ego. And sometimes our ego is that we can just work it out ourselves. There are other people out there who you can learn from there are courses you can learn from. And if you're willing to put ego to the side for a little bit and continue to accept you don't know everything, um, you'll go places. Like you went through a whole heap of working with other people. IT people don't like working with other IT people at times. If so, I see another MSP in the room, it's like, ooh, you know, we, we, yeah. we can't be cool. Um, there, there, can, there can be only one Linux alpha male or alpha person in a room, right? There can only be one. There's only right? one great And I, I better be him, right? Yeah, and that's it. In, to your point, though, around skills and stuff, though, I, like, uh, I don't like to call them soft skills because I think it's actually a shitty word, but like, they used to call them soft skills. Uh, there's so many other skills, not just like the tech skills. So yeah. I run a Toastmasters club on Wednesday lunchtime. If anyone doesn't know what Toastmasters is, it's all about public speaking and it's geared towards entrepreneurs. And uh, that's a, a one I look for is like, can people speak confidently? Not necessarily in front of a room like in, in a keynote, but can you, you know, stand up in front of a whiteboard, have, have a confident conversation, not um, get nervous and be, have, be able to structure your, the way you're speaking. I think that's like an important one. You know, things like, you know, how to uh, do research. Like so many people yeah. just don't even know how to use Google. It's like, <laughs> come on, just like, like Simp there's a lot of things that are literally, and you can, if you don't know how to use Google, seriously, there are courses to how to use Google to be like a power searcher. When somebody like asked me a question, wrote that course and put it on Udacity, you to me, and he got like 500 people do the course. So, basic skills like how to research, how to follow a little um, breadcrumb of something, yep. how to speak confidently, how to write a you know a proposal or a report or things that um, are uh, you writing. know you probably should have learned at school really, but a lot of us probably didn't pay attention at school to the report writing class. Those things are, are important and you can learn those things pretty easily these days. You can jump on YouTube or Udemy or whatever, or you can What's the web address Toastmasters. For that? Can you Google that? What's that? Yeah, Google it, yeah. Okay. But like you something like Toastmasters costs us costs me fifty bucks a year to join Toastmasters. Yeah. I go every week. I make a lot of friends as well. It's actually a social thing. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, I love that. That's just mm -hmm. my pet thing that I pick on. But there's probably a load of other things you know, like that, that are, are useful to your career, right? Go get a customer service job. 
Yes, yes, yeah. help desk. You know, something that we all have in common, right? Like, even at the council, is we all have customers. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Right? We customers. all have customers. And if I send them emails where I'm not capitalizing things, and I don't know how to spell. <laughs> I am at the moment. I have an excuse at the moment. And I write somebody's <laughs> name wrong, right? That's, we all have customers, right? Ultimately, we're all here to sell stuff to people, right? That's how I pay my mortgage, right? And if you don't know how to converse with people, right? Even if you want to be a pen tester, and we all have this idea, you're a pen tester in this room. If you really want to be in a room that much by yourself, there's probably other issues that you need to address, right? Like you're going to have to ultimately write a report, and somebody's going to have to read that report. I think that's the thing that blows my mind about pen testers, right? Is yeah, that yeah, yeah. Your job as a pen tester, who wants to be a pen tester? Raise your hand. You're, don't be scared now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey. All right, your job is 20% pen testing and 80% report writing. That's your job. How do you feel about it now? Right? <laughs> How, you, want, you still want to be a pen tester, right? You still, yeah, guy in the white does yes. it. And, you and, know, <laughs> your hand's gone down. See, this is my service though, right? Sorry, Matt, yeah, on, no, As a customer yeah. of pen testers, pen testing's useless to me unless I can do something about it. 100%. I got to do something yeah. with the results. I got to strike a project. Go tell a supplier to fix yeah, something. What's, what's and the advice? You have right? to communicate that yeah, to me. Yeah. <laughs> and even, even an incident response, right? You're constantly collaborating with yep. both your customer and your teammates. And if you don't know how to write properly, if you don't know how to express yourself, right? That's, yeah. that's a problem. So two things on that. We've been paid to write reports on other people's pen tests. Because the IT manager is, or CISO or whatever it. has come to us and said, here's an here's a exhaustive list of problems we have. I need to get funding to do X, Y, Z. I Can need you, to go to the board. Yeah, I need to go to the board. Can you <laughs> yeah, please exactly. translate this shit into something we can actually action? Can you give me and a dashboard? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's, it's about... So I, I worked at Woolworths. I was a checkout chick for yeah. four or five years. Um, people I've hired who've worked at McDonald's, came, mm -hmm. uh, Kmart, anywhere customer service, hospitality. Hospitality is awesome. Amazing. A few of my guys are hospitality people and I think that is, and I've, I've got a friend in Sydney who pretty much only hires hospitality people because <laughs> he was in hospitality. He, he's insurance, he's not in IT, but he says, yeah, that's, you've dealt with everything when you've yeah. been in hospitality. Yeah. And help desk as you, well. Don't be scared of help back desk. Back not so help much. Help desk is yeah. awesome. So some, what did you say? something else I've noticed. Is, so I have a bunch of software developers working for me, and Steve's got a few. Even software develop. Who's in the software development program here? All right, that's Rhiannon. All right, we got half a dozen or whatever. Yeah. Um, even software developers, when you write a pop up, that pop up has to be discernible and understandable by a human being, yeah. right? And it's, you went like. Even then, you have to know how to structure a proper sentence, right? So um, it's across the industry. If you don't know how to interact with people and collaborate, then that's a problem. It's communication, yeah. yeah. And if you can get your soft skill, I, I still like the, the term soft skill because yeah, everyone yeah. understands it. If, you, if, you haven't, if you're thinking, I'm going to go straight from TAFE into an IT career, and you've not worked in customer service or hospitality, go get a job in customer service hospitality. Yeah. Force yourself to engage with other people. I... I was an introvert. I didn't like talking to other people, but I, I had to engage yeah. while I was going beep, beep on the well, checkout. I had, a work, I had a job in an electrical store like Harvey Norman type shop, and yep. I was so shy as I was 16, and I was forced into being a salesman on the floor saying, can I help you? Can I help you? Yeah. Can I help you? <laughs> can Showing I be people washing machines and this and that. And this was in the day where we had customer product knowledge. So we'd have to read all the manuals for all the devices. And when someone walked in the shop, you knew pretty much how heavy hi-fi worked. Mm. These days, it's a bit of a different experience, I guess. But that, they say experience, Google <laughs> that experience of being able to help people and interact people of all ages, you know, all sorts of people would come into the shop, yeah. even people who were just a total waste of time, pain in the ass. I would just deal Every with everyone. Every customer's a good customer. Yeah, and I had some great... <laughs> I, I, I can tell you stories about this. I, I, Because I, I was uh, not on commission, I was a, a pen priester. I would have to go and talk to everyone, and occasionally I would hit jackpot. I, a customer would come in and would look like a kind of shitty customer, and one of the... Pre <laughs> Other people would go, uh, am I not allowed to swear? No, you are, but uh, I just like, right look like, like a shitty person. <laughs> yeah, they looked like, a, I guess, a customer that wasn't going to be a productive customer, and they wouldn't be served. And I would serve them, and, uh, and they would end up buying like a 200 televisions off me, because they were like a, you know, doing a raffle or something, and all the other staff would be like, damn you. And I'm like, well, I just, I'm just doing what I was just told. Talk to everyone, do what I was taught to do. They were doing this whole, I'm going to kind of play the game. And so I think, yeah, just really like, 
hospitality, like people make coffees just, all day or, yeah. or, or uh, you Love know, wait tables or bars or whatever. You're just but dealing with people over and over all day, right? J- it's just, awesome. Just one so, point, like, though, yeah. is like when, when, when I have to be on, mm. that is draining for me oh, still. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. 100%. A- after, after 12 years and, and now, you know, in my current position, I am... I am writing business cases for IT at council that go to a director, that go to the CEO, that go to council to get signed off for budget. You know, I have to go stand in front of council and defend why our cost in the cloud is X. Yeah. And that is draining for mm-hmm. me still, right? It's even today. But it's not that I have changed. It's that I've overcome the things that I know about myself in those situations, the physical response, understanding that and it's just practice yeah 100%. it is just yeah. practice right so um the the thing the thing about that is you just have to practice it and therefore you have to be in situations where you can practice mm-hmm. and so that's kind of that that kind of aspect and that practice will come from everywhere yeah so just practice. no one gets good no one gets up in public speaks and is good immediately it's practice um, I do a lot of public speaking and, and one of the girls once said to me, you seem so good at it. I, I always used to wear jackets so you couldn't see the sweat. <laughs> I, I, I do a lot. I mean, similarly, I do a lot of pitching, being in a startup and going yeah, to yeah, an accelerator, yeah. right? And I, honestly, if you want to get good at public speaking, go and do stand-up comedy. I mean, it's, it's yeah. probably the, it's probably the best way. Yeah. It's probably the best way to do it, right? You're like you got to make people laugh, right? You're interacting with them, right? If you don't make them laugh, you have failed, right? Mm-hmm. It's oh. pretty straightforward. You know what you need to improve. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this. I like so this. Let's it. rephrase it in a positive way. You I'm know what's improved. Steer it back. Sorry? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cloud and all that yeah. sort of fun stuff. So, so I'm going to steer it back yeah. off the entrepreneur path. Yes, back yes, yes, Let's talk about pathways. Yes. Because yes. yes. mm-hmm. I'm sure I, I, I was given some tips as to how to do <laughs> how it. How have we done? And uh, not well. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter, right? Obviously, we don't like following directions. And you're the engineer. Um, but okay, so we for, the, for these guys and girls um, who are coming through and are looking to get into the industry that you know we are so passionate about, mm-hmm. um, we talked about you know getting into the deep end. We talked about getting some of the soft skills and, and all those sort of things. That you know, to be honest, I don't read resumes because um, no. people bullshit. <laughs> um, but what would you say, someone coming into your environment? What would be a picking point for you to hire them as either an intern or, or an employee um, over? everyone else and we get hundreds of applicants for every position yeah it's a good one i i do favor the internship path because for me that's like a 30-day interview yeah, yeah, yeah. Effectively. and uh, <laughs> i like that and, uh, <laughs> pre, pre, i want to see i want to well. see this i don't I hope this isn't controversial i don't think it is uh, i want to see people who just basically show up like it's like kind of 80 percent of it sometimes i want you to show up and show you're actually interested and show and make the effort and like the technical stuff we can teach you all of that that's fine that's why i actually like the tafe yep. program it's not too long uh, you haven't spent four years cracking away at uni you've just got enough to get in the industry and then get out there and yeah just show up and you know if you promise to do something do it it's all kind of pretty basic stuff really do you have many uh, people not turn up to work yeah we've had some people who just like kind of not 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 show up but like not turn just, up mentally they just yeah yeah they're just not with it and it's like well you're not obviously but most people have been really good they've really stepped up but with regards to like interns like mm. i'll pick on reagan here so <laughs> i met reagan at the at the crikey conference and he he messaged me a few times on linkedin i'd kind of forgotten about him and he, did, he, did, he didn't he didn't give up he messaged me yeah. again and then we chatted back and forward and i said oh i haven't really got time for an intern at the moment but why don't you come on wednesday we'll have a coffee and he showed up and uh, we got on well and then he says oh can i bring jared with me and i went all right come on so well, jared and jared and jared yesterday and we we and i and i watched them working together i'm like you guys are awesome and jared's That's brother is sean i don't know anything well, about your technical skills really you just showed up and showed enthusiasm i'm like cool i'll give you a go he, like and jared's brother sean won't leave me alone and, and so now it's my responsibility to get him a job you know like i'm like oh and i got it's benjamin i got rihanna's i got her brother a job right and in insecurity at spartan so yeah, Sean's going to yeah, yeah, he's so, going to so uni. Persistence yeah. is important. I'll give you that. And, and, no, no, and I have had yeah, literally yeah. people not turn up for the first day of work. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm, I, I've got 100 people applying for a job and you just didn't bother turning up. Um, other people don't bother turning up to the interview. I'm like, please call ahead. 
mm-hmm. to tell me, like, be, be polite, because I'll remember your name the next time you apply. Yeah. But turn up, show some passion, just don't be overly persistent. If you rock up in my, in my reception and say, I'm, I'm, I'm here to uh, uh, talk to you about the job I've applied <laughs> for, I'll probably not pay any attention to you. But be persistent <laughs> to some extent, but mm. be polite. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, what about yourself? What, what, what do you look for? I mean, it's a lot of the same stuff. It's, um, it's um, you know, I, I hire a lot of developers because we're building a, a software platform. Um, and, and the first thing I, I look for is, um, is is a GitHub account, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, straight up. It's like so cliche. Like, you, Rihanna, do you, have a, do you have a GitHub account? Yes. Yeah, do you actually have stuff on it? Now I do, yes. Yeah, there you go. Because I told your brother, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, it's, and also, too, the thing that's great about GitHub is that I can see what you forked. It's not necessarily something you've written. It's, it's what you're interested in. It's what yeah. you're interested in, right? And if, if I see stuff. that you've pulled Docker or that you've pulled, you know, Kite Runner from the guys up in, in Asset Note, if I see you pulled that, then that shows me your interest, right? So we, we look at GitHub and we're not, I have a software development team, but I'll look at GitHub if you're a, if you're a security person because you might 100%. have some cool scripts. Totally. So, yeah. I, I have some I have some dope scripts in my I have some I, one of the first scripts in my GitHub account is from 2013. It's a script that will change Red Hat to CentOS. It basically pulls all the crap out of Red Hat. It's still on my GitHub, right? And uh, people know me from that, right? Seriously, I've got a bunch of Suricato stuff from back in the day in my GitHub account, and people still find that because it's public, right? Your GitHub account that's the number one thing I look at straight up. Mm-hmm. Not Who knows what Suricato is? Anybody. Oh, we got one. Yeah. Cool. Um, Boom. Talk to Richard later about internships. We may may be interested. Um. <laughs> I've got I've gotten jobs in Australia because they couldn't find anybody else that had any understanding of how to tune Suricata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's Straight noisy. Do you, it's want to explain, do you want to explain what it is, Fabe? Suricata is a NIDS. Who knows what NIDS is? Pen tester, go. <laughs> ah! uh, NIDS is all right. So there's two types of intrusion detection. There's host space up. Oh. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, good. Good curriculum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go for the win. The school works. There's there's two types of intrusion detection. There's NIDS, which is on the network, and there's host base, which yeah. runs on a on a computer, right? One uses an agent. The host base HIDS uses an agent. NIDS sits there on a tap or a mirror point and just pulls in data from the network, right? Promiscuously, it just pulls in everything, and then it runs a bunch of computation against that, and that's fast. When I mean. You know, depending on what you're connected to, you know, you're looking at one gigabit or more across that. And so you have to very, have a very optimized hardware platform to be able to do that. And so Suricata is built to be multi-threaded. So there's Snort, which is single threaded, right? Is not very good at one gigabit plus. And then there's Suricata, which was written to basically, oh gosh, I'm getting de- detailed here. Intrusion detection system that uses signatures to detect anomalies that may be exploits or everything else. And it's pretty dope. To that point, though, sorry, Matt. You, I'm, no, I'm, 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 you. I'm patient. Uh, you know, we all, I'm, I'm quite a good generalist. I know lots of things, but also I think having one thing you're kind of good at, having a little superpower, oh, yeah. can be like really magic because you then can hit some. You know, I, I still get calls about tuxedo, ba tuxedo, because I was like the only guy that knew <laughs> tuxedo. It's a weird thing, but that's uh, having something little that is kind of a little bit rare and unusual that you know really well and you can say I actually really know this really well yeah can, don't be afraid be of niche really cool right but but at the same time I'm, I'm a big fan of being a jack of all trades too but yeah. having one thing is kind of good you can be proud of that too right you know I'm like really good at this I can really do like Linux bash shell mm-hmm. scripting right really well I still and, get uh, that about BMC patrol yeah. I haven't BMC, used BMC patrol yeah. in like 15 years and do you remember I patrol calls. Yeah. 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 I get anyway. calls about MQ series, which I worked on in 1996 at IBM, and I was, it was my first thing I ever worked. And I had people call me recruiters about MQ series. I don't really want to job me MQ series, but it's kind of cool that that still pops up and people still it's, call me. I'm like, yeah, I think that's one of the problems with our industry as well. You want to know everything. Yes. And, and there is way more value in being a specialist, um, Matthew, because yeah, Matt. you've been waiting patiently. Oh. Yeah. I'm he's, gonna, he's Canadian. I'm going to buck the trend he's a little bit. Very patient, yeah. Um, the most important part of the paper, the paper that you submit to me in, a, in an interview is the cover letter. I will read the cover yeah. letter. Hell yeah. Um, and I, I read the cover letter because it gives me an indication of your communication. Yeah, um, 100%. And I'm, I'm looking for a little bit of a story there. I'm looking for the why, uh, both why you're applying for the job, but why you're interested in the thing yeah. that it is. So the cover letter is important to me. Um, as far as actual skills go, I'm, I am also going to buck the trend here a little bit. 
institutionalized okay. enterprise. So we, we do look for some depth in the training, but we're not looking for experts for everything. We are looking for people that want to learn. We're looking for people that have some base skill that we can build on. Yeah. Whether and, and the team's vast, right? We've got security people, we've got infrastructure people, we've got networking people, we've got service desk people. So we, we, we're not looking for one person to do all that. We're looking for a lot of different people to do a lot of different yeah. things. And move laterally too. You've got the opportunity for career progression into another area that right. maybe they didn't think. Or cross And a bit of industry knowledge as well, right? Yeah. So like I, I was in networking in the UK, knew I was going to move to Australia, knew there was like buggable jobs doing that here. So I said, I'm going to Sydney, got to get in finance. So I just got the crappiest job I could find in the UK at an insurance company. It's the only one I could get into to get some finance experience. Hey, I'm owned by insurance but now. When, when I, well, I work for insurance now, so my main player's insurance too. But uh, when I got to fine. Sydney, I had some insurance finance on my resume and now I got into Sydney Futures Exchange, I did five years at Commonwealth Bank, I did a wow. whole load of um, mm. in finance and that was because the recruiters in those industries literally look on your resume and go, uh, they don't read anything, they just go, uh, finance, yeah, you got a job. So that, not necessarily saying you guys should all get into banking, but there may be certain industries in your town or city that are, um, are hot and you know, know a bit about that industry, even if it's just not in a job you go get a bit of work experience or you just show that you know about you know in tourism for instance that you've you know what the um, ATDW is or something like that or you've done a bit of reading around you know the industry sector yeah. so that they can the, uh, you know be confident the, in you. One, one second this gentleman over yes. here had his hand up. Sorry, hand. Yeah, sorry question for Matt. Mm -hmm. um, do you still work for like the public sector? Yes mm -hmm. I work for council so today. He's getting paid by council right now. I'm getting paid by council right now. And benefits. And we're paying we are, we are, we are. <laughs> You're paying your own bills. Um, yeah, so I lead the... We're paying for you a little bit without rights. Right. I didn't actually, just actually, just actually say bit. what I did. No, 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 actually, yeah, we, we, we explained what everyone else did. Um, Matthew, please explain who, who you are today. Uh, my title is Executive Coordinator Cybersecurity and Information Solutions. And translated into English, that what, means? What that means is I run IT ops and cybersecurity at <laughs> council. Um, did you recently get a promotion? Did you, did you, I did. Yeah, you're, so you're over, you're over the IT group too, as well. Yeah. Yeah, cool, man. So, Good job. Thanks. Um, yeah, my, uh, so I effectively run half the section. Yep. No, I don't run the application side. So I run the infrastructure, ops, service desk, cyber teams, and that's about 50 people. Yep. But, and then the app side's about another 50, and then we've got outsourcing on top of that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that that's that regime there and a lot of the jobs at council right now are about managing suppliers because we have a pretty deep supply chain but we are we are we do have some in-house capability cyber is one of those areas uh networking is one of those areas clouds one of those areas that's growing and you were telling me that there's kind of as a byproduct of learning from vendors which is still a great opportunity there's there's kind of a little bit of a, um, a golden nugget appearing within your team at this point in time. Yeah, well, when, when, you, when you outsource, your IT supply chain gets constrained, especially very large contracts. Our outsourcing is a very large contract. It, there's commercial constraints to do stuff. Yeah. And then the business starts to get frustrated with those constraints, mm -hmm. yeah. and it starts to do its own stuff. Yeah. Rogue IT. Ro which, we call it rogue IT, but really it's the business just solving their problems. 100%. Right? And, uh, like... One example of so that. So you're talking about building more in-house now, potentially. Or the business having is, learned from those vendors. Yes, I am building in-house, yeah. but also the business is building in-house directly. Yeah. So a good example of that is our traffic, the traffic department. They got a couple guns in there doing some pretty mm -hmm. cool stuff in AWS. They they've got some pretty cool tech out in the field for traffic counting, and Gee, wow. they are crunching big data to do traffic models, and they're doing it themselves. Yep. Well, and this that's is a, a challenge. cloud thing, right? The, the kind so, of so yeah. cool. to your point about cloud, like you can look at IT departments. Yeah, look, look at IT departments, but don't read job descriptions carefully. <laughs> like that traffic one is traffic intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. You read it, it's AWS developer is what it actually is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think this is an important thing to piggyback on top, top of. We have people here from the, the, from the security curriculum. We've got people here from the software development curriculum. Do we have anybody from the network side of the business? Networking. So hey. we got all, oh, so we got a large percent. So you know what all three of you have in common? The cloud. 
straight up, mm -hmm. right? All three of you have the cloud, right? So all three of you should be looking at AWS Cloud Prac and Azure Essentials, yeah. all three of you. Because and you, even and you're all software developers, if yeah. you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, software yeah. defined networking. Are you, are you networking yeah. people? You're yeah. software developers. You're like, this is. <laughs> so, like, don't to that point. Even like, if you're writing a bit of, you know, you know, DevOps script or something, it's going to be code. If you don't have an right? AWS, if you don't have a free AWS account right now, go get one. Go home, get one. I swear to God, seriously. I've told everybody that's come in and met with me, I told them, go home. It's free. It's 100% free. Just don't put stuff in the wrong yeah, place. Just like, click the free tier button, <laughs> free tier <laughs> only, and then you won't oh, get charged. On, on that network, on that network comment, you know, like my background professionally is networking. Mm -hmm. I don't do networking anymore. I manage a team that does networking. Mm -hmm. um, but when we, we did recently did a cloud move. So we moved out of our data centers up in Brisbane. We're about 80% done. We're in Azure. We had to re-architect our entire network security overlay yeah. for the cloud. Mm -hmm. Security zones, application security groups, network security groups, new firewalls. I've got a question for you, Matt. All sorts of stuff. I know, I know. We need to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully in the near future. In, our, in the near future. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, good, but the, good. the trick, though, is that that was a collaboration between people that have a networking background. Mm. Mm-hmm and they were learning new skills in the cloud. And because they came from pretty traditional places with MPLS networks and big LANs, yep. campus LANs, and suddenly we're saying, hey, go design an Azure network security architecture for us, please, yep. and land all of our apps there in, for the next 12 months. And, and, you, and you need an abstraction that sits over top of that software-defined networking, the SDN, right? Whether that's in Azure with virtual networks and AWS with VPCs and the constructs there. That's all done with software. If somebody were to sit behind me and watch what I do, they'd be like, oh, Paul's a developer. I'm not really a developer. I'm, I'm like the ops side, right? But if you look at what I do, it looks like I'm a developer, right? Because I write code all day because I write in Ansible and Terraform and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's all, everybody in this room, whatever curriculum you're in, that's, that's the commonality there. Mm -hmm. They'll always, always be hard networking. Of course. They'll always Drawing. be hard networking. You need switches, you need routers, you need mm -hmm. firewalls. You're going to need some of that stuff, but the environments, especially, well, as you go to cloud, it becomes code, so. And, and as it becomes a software development defined network, you've got a whole lot of opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and suddenly go buy this new router uh, and get hardware and provision things and wait for it to arrive and prepare the rack and get the power supplies and so you, can, you can do things and experiment, <laughs> which is the big thing, right? You know, you can experiment with things without having to outlay any, any to buy hardware. And, you know, and now in AWS, you can accessible. use things like um, Suricata now that mm -hmm. they've opened up you can the now, network. Net, you can, you, can, now, you yeah. can now use actual Suricata uh, and, yeah. and whatnot in, in AWS. So go spin security onion up. Um, so, yeah. But on that point as well, so I just attended, anyone here go to Ossert last week? <laughs> anyone in cybersecurity here or want to be in cybersecurity? All right, on the Gold Coast every year, is one of the biggest cybersecurity conferences. Don't worry, I found out about it too late as, long, as well. Um, but it, it, this year it was held at the Star. You have amazing speakers. Um, you have shoots and everything else. It's very patient. Ha hang on a second, there's one gentleman in front of you. Uh, uh, the big thing that was there was about uh, orchestration and, and automation and SDN networks and all this. There's this fear that you're gonna be you know, um, ruled out of a job. Yeah. But if you learn how to code in Ansible and everything else, you're moving up the, the pipe. So don't be afraid of that. Sorry, you, you've been waiting for patient. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you get two questions, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, well, I was going to have two questions. First of all, I was going to uh, ask, previously you said that plenty of times people wind up refusing to train um, customers refuse to let juniors on do a thing. So how do you train juniors if customers refuse not always, just sometimes. You, you don't tell them. Yeah. No, no, so... Yeah. No, no, you do not. Because <laughs> they'll find out when they find... Um, so the way we do it is we've got multi-tiers. So when, as a consultant, I will charge out a junior analyst doing Added junior things. Yeah. We have to proceduralize a lot of what they do because, you, you know, we, we, so that we don't have unhappy customers and also getting sued... Um, I need them to follow a certain workflow. And that's probably important as well. When you go into the workforce and you're being forced to do things that you think, oh crap, you know, this is, this is beneath me, just do it and learn the process. We've got yeah. an engineer here who had to learn process. Yeah. Um, as you get more experience, you're then given opportunities and you raise, you know, as you prove yourself, you raise the, you know, the, the ladder. 
We just charge less for our juniors. And, and you do, you can do what's called a blended rate, right? So yeah. we have a, we have a rate card. It might be I might have a hundred percent of a junior with twenty percent of me or something. Yep. And you know, and, I, and the invoice will say you know five blended days rate. for uh, this junior rate plus a day of Steve. And we, that's me doing an hour or two with them a day, helping them and all that. So most people, not, uh, most customers are cool with that. Occasionally we get a customer who's just like, no, nah, don't want to stuff around, I want the expert. And they no, just no. charge three times and for the expert. that's where we put the high rate on and go, yeah, as you go. No and that, that's that's yeah. in the commercial world, right? Uh, in, in When you're in a larger organization, like, like the organization that I lead, um, those roles are designed as entry roles. Yeah. And there's mentor, yep. there's, there might not be formal team. mentorship programs, but the point is you're part of a team. Yeah. And that team has people around you. So there's never going to be a point in an organization that I lead and that these gentlemen lead where you're going to hang yourself. So you're, you, th there might be times when you're uncomfortable doing those things, but you just got to put your hand up. Hey, I need help with yeah. this thing. And don't be afraid to put your hand up. That's where juniors fail. Yep. I've got my head down, bum up, trying to do the work. I don't want to look like I can't do this. And so I keep progressing yeah. on. And then what I deliver is shit. And that's when the manager then screams at me, some. Um, put your hand up. You're there as a junior to yeah. learn. I, and we have, uh, sorry, Paul was going to I was going to say, gonna say, listen, these guys are services company. I'm a product company, so I don't charge people based on junior. So my joke earlier was really genuinely a joke. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, um, so, but I think the important thing is that, that if you have playbooks and you have structure in your yeah. system, and that's a really important thing. So a lot of smaller organizations, they'll bring on a junior just because they're cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And they won't have any special structure for you. What I've been, I've been doing this long enough. I started my first company in 1996, and I learned early on that having a playbook that says, if you're doing um, pen testing, this is the structure that we expect, right? And then you follow that. And that's how you learn really, really quickly, well, right? Conversely, if you go into a job that doesn't have a structure, you don't want to, how to make yourself really mm. valuable right away. Build right. Put structure in place yeah. for yourself. So and one of my juniors basically is the wiki gardener. You know, in a phrase, you know, wikis are, and he's like the wiki gardener. He has to look after the wiki. If someone doesn't add something in the wiki, he's, he's took it on as his job, and he gets people to add things into the documentation. And, and it basically is a pain in the ass to lots of people, but it's good. I love it. I'm also, like, keep doing that. And, he, he, and, and that, he's took that on, and like, that's one of the things I like about him is that he's a reasonably junior person. He said, I see a gap, like you're saying, with the process. I'm going to be the guy who Looks gets everyone that. to document stuff. And that's, he gets a brownie point. Oh, yeah. Right? Sorry, gentlemen's yeah. at the back. Oh, we'll just make a comment. We actually signed up for the, um, the uh, OSCERT uh, program that you're talking about. Yeah, cool. Uh, because we're not part of a company, they want to charge us like $1,000 each. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Are you yeah, guys me, members me too. of the ACS? Me too. What's that? Are you members of the Australian Computer Society? No. Okay. Um, get involved with the ACS because we were looking at, with the schools program, trying to get some of the, like, the kids in schools along to OSCERT because it shows them the potential future. Um, we're trying to talk to ACS and all that about ASAR and OSCERT's about a thousand bucks a person. Yeah, it is expensive, um, but you get a lot out of it. And, and the biggest thing about a lot of it, now that we're getting back into physical, you know, being around each other again, um, there's more value in being in the hallway and talking to other people yeah. than there is actually in the tutes. Like just standing and having a conversation with someone else in the industry and learning from them is, is, worth, is worth every dollar of that. But AC, talk to ACS. Um, Richard here is a member of the ACS. The TAFE's a member of the a ACS. Um, get involved with them because we're trying to find pathways that we can get members along to these conferences because we see it as, as a potential pathway into industry. Well, this, this is a great time for me to jump on because I would love to go to Oz Street because I live on the Gold Coast, but I, it cost me $2,300 a year to be a member and then it cost me to have to go to as well. So uh, other or, other conferences like B-Sides and Crikey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 100% like cheap? Yeah, why yeah, didn't I, you, you, I thought you were tips. supposed to go to Crikey. I never saw you. No, I, we, I, we, I we didn't get tip. tickets in time because they... Oh, because they sold out. So, so I have a good tip in regards to those grassroots conferences. I'm a huge fan of the grassroots conferences. Yeah. I go to Linux Conf. I actually wore my T-shirt. Um, every year I've been part of the Linux Conf uh, organization, organizing committee. I've helped run them. I've been to conferences. I've volunteered. I've, uh, one of the best things you can do at these grassroots conferences, if you haven't got any money, is like volunteer yeah. to be a helper. You will, uh, you'll get to see a fair amount of the talks, but you'll get to meet lots of people, practice your personal skills. Often you might get to meet the really awesome keynotes that no one else gets Yeah, because you're in meet. the green room yeah, up the back yeah. with them. And yeah, and I ended up being like the intro show. When I was at Brisbane, 
uh, Linus Conf. I was the guy who introduced everyone before they came on stage, and I got to introduce you know, Andrew Chichdall and all these like, who people who I think are kind of almost rock stars, and then you get to have a little chat with them. Is that the, R- is that the R-Sync guy? Yeah, yeah Andrew right, Chichdall sure. wrote cool. R-Sync, he did uh, Samba, uh, a whole load of other stuff. Yeah, right. so, oh, that's Chich, right, yeah. Chich is yeah. awesome. Uh, really nice guy, but um, that's free, and you get uh, some. They feed you as well if you go to another city. <laughs> Signing up tomorrow. If, if you're homeless, they give you somewhere to sleep. Um, it's great. Just to talk about Linux Comp for two more seconds, uh, it goes all around <laughs> it's, Australia. It's if you go to, you say, I want to volunteer in the Canberra one, and I've got no money, they'll sometimes even give you accommodation. Yeah, for free. So, if you're going to be a helper, and so that's a, the best experience ever. I forced my younger guys to do it when it came to the Gold Coast. And they were like, oh, why are you getting me to do this? I said, I'm paying you, you know, I'll pay you salary for that week. And they said it was the best thing they ever did. But well, uh, do that. I, by the way, back to B-Sides and Crikey. Um, SecureStack is a sponsor of both those organizations. Tickets are less than 100 bucks. Um, it's a great way to come and meet people. And if you do a talk, you know, if you put something together that's sexy enough, you get a free ticket, right? Yeah. So but there don't you go. But don't think things aren't sexy enough, because I, I went to Ossert for years and was surprised at some, some of the stuff went way over my head at the start. But then the more I went, I went, oh, I actually know, I know some shit and I want to deliver a talk. And I ended up delivering a talk and I've seen people way smarter, but you may have a viewpoint that someone else doesn't. 100%. And that's something that is worth yeah. sharing. So, mm-hmm. And if yep. you go to a conference and you're just in the audience, like think about how you might ask a really good question or something like that. How can you contribute to the conference? Yeah. Uh, you can often... Uh, structure an intelligent question a real good question and uh you may you know you may be able to then potentially meet the speaker who knows you might be hiring right that's a great way to actually and then someone in the audience might hear you make and ask the question and go hey that guy seems pretty smart i'm going to go and have a chat to him and you i've hired people in conferences i've hired i've seen people many people are hired in conferences actually mm-hmm. so use those opportunities whether it's you know coming to my bar camp on 30th of may or um even here today You're right you guys, have asked, <laughs> right? you guys have asked uh, we're sponsoring that too today. as well <laughs> <laughs> you, no but like <laughs> in all seriousness you guys, on a few, you guys have asked questions i remember that guy as mr super patient Yes. To see you again. Yep. And, Mr. You know, Patient, guy in all white, <laughs> big guy next to the guy in all white, got it. <laughs> pen tester, pen tester's friend, got it. Right things, things like stick in your head, right? So you're doing the right thing, just showing up. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to shut up. For network you. network line, much. network yeah, line. There you go. Oh, uh, how are we going on the script? Yeah, how are we going? Dave? You played um, uh, Snakes and Ladders, right? Kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. that. That's cool. Um, I'm just looking at uh, the, the tips that I was given. What I'm hearing, just to sort of summarize it, is persistence. Um, experience, soft skills, being prepared to get into the deep end, being prepared to like roll your sleeves up and, and just give it a go, um, volunteering, um, you know, just getting involved in the industry and, and not living in a basement and trying to be yeah. a pen tester. Well, live, live in a basement if that's what it takes to learn the skills in a short period of time. Sorry, go. What do you like the most? Bing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What'd you say? That, Bing is that's, like a brow, that's a search what engine that's like Google. What do you like oh. the most? It's not Bing. I'm, I missed the Bing joke, but okay. <laughs> I just had it explained to me. <laughs> what, what do what? you like the most? Yeah. yeah. I like coding. Okay, cool. Any, any particular style of coding? SQL. I love okay. okay, so Ooh, I love SQL people. So, so have, you, have you messed around with SQL injection? Not yet. I really want to. Oh. Do, yeah, that, that's something that massive. Everyone here needs to actually, no matter if you're in cyber or not, needs to actually take cyber seriously. It needs to be not a side of the industry. It needs to be everything you do. So talk to this dude about SQLI, SQL injection. Everyone needs to know how it works so that when you're coding, you're actually thinking about those things at the same time. Yeah. Because input, otherwise he'd ha- he would not be making money. Two, two words, input validation, right? Yeah. Two words right there. Also, also, here's here's my takeaway for the day. API equals eye door. <laughs> that was API. You, you saw this last yeah, yeah, yeah. API equals eye door. Think about that and come back to me later. I don't get it. <laughs> is that, that going to be part of your application process if you can answer that? Totally going to be part of my application. The one process. thing we didn't really talk about today, um, maybe we did, it was about teamwork. 
So like yeah. we talked we kind uh, of collaborated a on, little yeah. bit, but like I think you guys work in teams a bit in your classes and you work together, hopefully reasonably well together. But like any of these companies you work for, unless you work in your sole developer in a startup and you're the only guy, you're going to be in a team. So like working, one of the things we look at is how do people, how are going to people going to work mm. with our team too, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I quite like taking people in twos as well. That's why I took you two in two this week because uh, you can kind of. It's like chickens. With each you other. need to get two chickens. And if you only get one chicken, it's bad. And when we talked about mentoring, like any good team should also be like co-mentoring within the team yeah. as well, right? It's not always going to be your boss mentoring you down like that. There's going to be a lot of this uh, on the. The lo lower level, and mm -hmm. and that's really, I think, uh, something good companies do well. Uh, they 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 have a, a flat structure, and everyone in the company can actually mentor each other. It might be the most junior person who just started that week teaches me a new thing, right? Uh, and 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 a, and a good boss will recognise that. I don't yeah. know that, and then and he'll probably say, "Oh, you know that. We're better than anyone here." So let's just stop for a minute. Can you just tell everyone else because we don't know that? Yeah. So, so that 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 team um, uh, magic. I'll just call it magic. It's not really magic, but is really important to me. And I think uh, you guys do that in TAFE, which is cool. I, I think you do a fair amount of. Uh, Warren might be able to. Um, yeah. Just, yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> on, on that teamwork comment. Oh, is there a question first? Oh, go go go. Oh, just, I can push them to yes, the back. They're, they're way up the back. <laughs> Te on, on teamwork comment, it, we haven't talked about it much, but um, two, there's there's process regimes in any company. Yeah. Right. So you know, council's fairly traditional. We got. ITIL processes galore, incident yep. management, change management, problem management, all those good things. Everybody has to participate. Security's got to log changes. Security's got to review changes. Network, network team's got to do all the implementation plans, do all that good stuff, right? But following process is one thing. When, when issues arise in processes and someone didn't log their change correctly, how you deal with that is important. You're a team, right? You want the change to be successful. So go engage with them. Hey, you missed the thing. Can we work that out? Right. right? Instead of just, you know, whacking them over the wrist. Right. Or, th or, th or, th or, or, or you, you, networking didn't log the change and now the project's delayed. Yeah, finger pointing. Matthew, bad. here's a report. We've wasted 10 grand. And I'm like, why didn't you just sort it out and save me 10 grand? I think, I think, <laughs> cancel. <laughs> cancel, sorry. Matt? Sorry, uh, Jim, oh, yeah, go back. Ahead. I wouldn't answer the phone. Yeah, same. Sorry, doesn't, I don't answer the phone. He doesn't answer the phone for me. He won't answer the phone for you. <laughs> Someone in your company is sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, I ask, look, I just want to come in for two days a week as a work experience thing. Is there some behind the scenes red tape that I don't know about that will stop you from being... Yes, 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 100%. Yes. Yeah. There's more for him than there is for us, but yes, the answer is yes. So with the TAFE, there's a, I just filled in a form this morning. There's a work experience form that has to be filled in that makes sure you're insured. Because uh, in Australia, if you work for free, you are not covered by workers' comp insurance. So the TAFE actually has an insurance policy that covers people doing work experience. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, there's a bit of a weird kind of gap who, there in the... Uh, who so handles it? Does, does Wayne him? Uh, no, uh, but Karen sent me the one today. Okay, cool. yeah. uh, sometimes it's David or Karen do, or used to be Do that ahead of time. Or, Get that lined up ahead of time, and then organizations like like Steve and I, you know, I can't speak for the council, but for Steve and I, once you tick that box, then we're super open to it, and should be very aware it, from it. It is, and that yeah. is yeah. yeah, and that is a, a program that is very underutilized. I was talking to Richard the 100%. other day, and he said, oh, I said, what about the the TAFE intern program? And he says, oh, it's kind of like the Steve Dalton intern program because you're one of the few people who actually takes it up. And I'm I, I it thought up too. he does. What the hell? He so, yeah, I know, but like I was the first person to do it, and I don't think this. I think there's only probably do we have to have a competition a couple of others. Um, to your uh, point, yeah, put yourself yeah. in our shoes as well. We're getting hundreds of applicants. If we answered the phone to every single person who called up and said, "Can I please have a job?" I'd not get anything to do, and I got customers to serve. So. Kind of like him, if you ring my mobile, you ring my phone, my, my staff will tell you, I'm sorry, he's not available. But, but find the processes where you can get, and this is that whole networking thing, if TAFE are doing a program, become their best friend. Like you are the most, uh, most marketable candidate at that point. They'll go, oh, I really want to put guy in white shirt forward for that internship because he's always here, he's always, you know, he's always turning up, he's always becoming inventive, he's helping everyone else in the team. You, you'll be the favorite. Like, so 
there's a, there's a saying in, in business and in, in entrepreneurship and everything else of how you do anything is how you do everything. So turn up to TAFE every day and, mm-hmm. and you know give all your game, turn up to everything you do and give everything. You'll get recognized for that. And then when these opportunities open up in the Steve Dalton um, internship program. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I used to just call up Elan and just say, who's your top student? Yeah. yeah. Elan would tell me, right? So yeah, go to your classes and the, uh, be really nice to your lecturers, up. right? Here's, here's the other answer. There. Where's, the, where's the other ones? <laughs> here's, here's the other answer. Impress me, right? That's what it comes down to. Impress me, right? Yeah. Like I have, like I am dropping balls all the time because I have a business and it's growing and time is the only thing that I can't get back, right? So take that moment to impress me, right? Mm-hmm. Like find a cool article that's Paul doesn't know about and tag him in LinkedIn. Doesn't exist, no. don't exist. <laughs> Were you gonna say something? No, yeah, just, yeah. just on there the red go. tape. There, there, is, there is red tape for me. It's more structured at council. So we, we do a yearly intake. So there, the people in Culture yeah. Branch do a yearly intern intake. Um, and they do that across council in all sorts of positions. So basically I register my interest in that program. Uh, so it is, a, it is a little more structured. It generally happens on a financial year, interestingly, basis. We're coming up to July. Hmm. So there's uh, opportunity opening up. Our, opportunity. Our budgets, and this is something to consider too, like both for government agencies, especially for government agencies, um, but also other companies, financial year matters. Yeah. So you uh-huh. know, we put That's new requests in for new positions or changing positions for financial year. Yep. That was become enacted by council in July. Yeah. So Matt, Matt said something about 10 minutes ago that I want to just real quick circle back to you. And I know we're running out of time here. He said about ITIL and enterprise and large organizations. Sorry, mate. Um, when I'm looking to hire people, I want to see people that have done some time in enterprise yeah. and in startup. Because if I hire somebody that's only done startups, I know they're going to be a corner cutter, right? And conversely, if I hire somebody on an enterprise, I'm going to be like, they're not going to be able to move fast enough yeah. for me, right? And so I look for somebody that's got a combination of those skills. I'm hiring a, uh, a product manager right now. And by God, to find somebody that's got both has been incredibly yeah. difficult. I've yeah. looked at some great people with enterprise, and I've looked at some great people with startup, and I need somebody with both. Go ahead, man. Sorry. Mm. Lack, lack thereof or too much of? <laughs> no. Nah. It comes down to the personality. It also comes down to the position. Like, I mean, if I'm going to put someone... From my perspective, we handle cyber incidents. I'm not going to put, no offence, a 20-something on a call with a $100 million company that's currently burning to the ground because of a cyber incident because there's going to be, unfortunately, the perception that you're not mature enough to do it. Um, and so don't be silly and, and go for... You know, something like that. And, and I, I lived that job. In my 20s, no one would employ me because of the fact that you're too young. Um, but there, at, at the other end of the spectrum, can you be too old? Only if you're not going to get up and do shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, impress me. I don't care if you're 19 or if you're 99. Impress me, right? Straight yeah. up. Straight yeah, up. And, and just, just for, for, for a real life example, um, I think our team... My, my entire team has an age spread of at least 50 yeah. years. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. We, got, yeah. we got people that, and, and you know, some of that are people that have indispensable skills. They've been around since the mainframe was around, yeah. right? They know how the parts of the environment work that no one else knows. Do you still have a mainframe around? Is it? We, Dude, mainframes are huge. <laughs> we still plenty of mainframes around. We, we recently decommissioned it. <laughs> do, do you know? Do you know? AWS has a service. I shit you not. AWS has a service that allows you to interact with a mainframe. We had a Fujitsu mainframe recently. I know a client with two AS400s yeah. in the code. Yeah, I was going to say AS400s. I, so, I know dozens of people in the States that got lots of IBM mainframes. Lots of them. Yeah. Any more questions? Because we're like, at, we're, I, yeah. I can see Karen sort of like, we're quitting. Any other questions? Yeah, right. This gentleman She's here. Cool. Yeah, one last question. There's a second question. So, from what I've read, part of it seems to be be active in the community. Well, the Tech, the IT industry community. How do you, and part of that is conferences, is there specific like online groups that you can communicate with as well for yeah. during COVID in the current yeah. environment? So we have a group called the Gold Coast Innovation Hub. I'm on the board of directors of that at the moment. We had an event just last night with Steve Baxter from 
um, Shark Tank. That was a very much a startup y thing. But having said that, there was lots of people there in the industry. There was people, the young people that were there that were, didn't have startups show up to those. They have an event calendar. The cohort have the same. That's over at the Health and Knowledge Precinct. Yeah, the school's cool. office is over are. there. They have an event calendar. You yeah, can just rock in there and look yeah. at the wall. Yeah, uh, I run a group called Gold Coast Tech Space, which is Maker Space. Yep. What else is there? There's, 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 there's uh, ACS, you a you mentioned. Australian Computer Society, ASAR. Um, look at Reddit, look at uh, like the Slack groups, there's Discord groups. There's, there's a shit ton of stuff out there if you go looking for the intro. You just got to find the thing you like and then find other people. No, you might want to just pick a month and say, June, I'm going to say, June is my blitz. I'm going to go to everything. Yeah. And just like, I'm going to have a good crack, go to every single event I can possibly find. And then if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, what? you know, and so. Oh, well, I was just to say, like back to Rihanna's point, and you're, I'm going to combine those, right? Find something and become the SME, the subject matter expert for that weird little kind of niche, right? Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean you're not going to have to do other things in your, in your career, right? But do that, and that serves multiple purposes. It impresses me because like, why the hell do you know so much about suricata, <laughs> right? But also it shows me that you've hustled in a short period of time, you've learned and become this SME, right? That's impressive. Yeah. I started the, the Java user group in Brisbane just because it had you languished for many years and, uh, and I thought I was coding Java and I was working at Suncorp at the time and I asked Suncorp for the room and <laughs> they, they, oh yeah, 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 they, and uh, I met like half of my Brisbane network through that group because I was the person running it. Yeah. So also if you're feeling brave, like start a group. Yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah. Like if come if to it you. doesn't exist, don't feel bad about creating it because you then are the center of attention, like or the, if it exists, go on the committee. I've got, I've got a, one more thing, actually. So, well, how many? Raise your hand if you're in the cyber program again. Sorry. So we got. Well, yeah, that's, that's a cool. pretty big group. So a friend of mine, Casey Ellis, runs a company called Bug yeah. Bug Crowd, right? Yeah. And what I love about what I love what I love about that world is. You can take what I said a second ago about subject matter expert, right? Go and, f and just research one thing and write a sweet ass white paper about it, right? And that right there can be your intro. Boom, right there. Like do three, yeah. three months, two months of work, three months of work on a specific security issue, whatever that is. And we found some recently in AWS. There's lots of that kind of stuff out there. So. Yeah, Casey's awesome. Casey's mm -hmm. great, yeah. Is yeah. there a concept of student societies at TAFE like they have at unis? Not really. There like, is, but it's not, a gen, it's not something we're all part of. No. But Does you could not? start one and you could say, hey, Paul, we've got a student society at, uh, or Dave or whoever uh, on cyber. Could you come talk to us and then and invite, don't just invite TAFE people, invite people from mm -hmm. anywhere. You could start that tomorrow. And, you know, if you were the, whoever's brave enough to be the person to stand up to do that, you're going to then become the center of that little world. And Who doesn't think they can know? actually like help run an organization like that? Who doesn't, doesn't think? Doesn't. doesn't. Then yeah. you should be the person running it. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't think he understood the question, but he's because he said he was going to give it a crack. But <laughs> no, no, no. If you feel like I couldn't do that, then you totally have to throw yourself into the deep end and do it. Because right yeah, you, you you will benefit so much out of it. Like I, I've started groups before. I've helped other people do it. And like I remember, um, a friend of mine started up a Gold Coast Golden Retriever meetup group. Yeah. And she thought the first time that she'd hold it, there'd be like three or four dogs turn up, 20 turned up. And she became like networked with everyone. And this is different from technology, but she was the one that was willing to give it a shot. Yeah. Um, so if you feel like you couldn't do it, just get out there and do it because you'll meet cool people like these guys. Um, you'll be in front of your teachers. And, and the other thing is too, to your point, you can do a lot of things online, but we are in such a privileged spot to be in a country that is not as affected by COVID, to be able to be mm -hmm. here today, be sitting next to each other, you have the opportunity to network next to each other, get in and take advantage of that. Because mm -hmm. other countries haven't done as well and they're now getting, they're getting their jabs and they will get yeah, back into my it. My British friends find it amazing when I post photos of like yeah. startup weekend and all of you guys sitting here and they're yeah. like, whoa. When, when, I so, tell, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I tell my family in Michigan that it's being hard hit again, yeah. that, that I get to go to stuff like this, that just blows their mind, right? They're jealous as hell. Yeah. Blows but their you, mind. you need to get out there and do stuff and, then, and, and not just go, the end of the day finishes, I'm done. It is your career. It, whatever you put in, you get out. Yeah. Don't forget balance, though. Yeah, yeah, of I'll course. Caution, balance. Yeah. Caution, balance. Mental health is important. <laughs> I would quite like to see um, more of those kinds of groups. So I'm, I'm, I think I've run 27 bar camps now since I've been in Queensland. I'm 47 now. I want like the 20 
some 20 someone yeah. stand up and maybe say hey i'd like to run it for a while yeah you know if you see a group that's there around already that maybe with someone like me is a bit tired at times well, that's the know, biggest problem with organizations is getting yeah. people to help like even the acs yeah. we're trying to help drive events for the acs how many people are putting their hands up and saying oh, i'll okay. help and it's like not enough no. you need to get in there and put your hand up yep yeah. cool Talk to Richard and Karen and, cool. and we'll rope you into stuff. We need the next generation of community leaders, right? Yeah. In the, so, yeah. so that was one of the questions is, because we're way over budget. Um, but one of the questions that <laughs> came up. Story of our life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew <laughs> put in there is, what would you do differently knowing now? For me, I didn't put my hand up enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds in like, the yeah. the early days, yeah. Yeah. Took me a while. Anything else you'd do differently? Oh my goodness, so um, many things. Is this, crazy. Is this going on the Can internet? Can we go to the next person while I think about it? Is this, <laughs> Karen, is this going on the internet? <laughs> All right, then I'll... I can't say. <laughs> I would have gone to TAFE instead of go to uni, I can tell you that. I wouldn't like, have become TAFE Russian. TAFE like a year compared to four years of wasted. The council and the private groups, from someone that doesn't have a lot of industry experience, I have a lot of personal experience building websites. Is that on your resume? No, it's not on Should resume. be on your resume. So Most of my resume <laughs> experience comes from trade. I'm a fridgey by trade installing commercial air cons. Um, I did take in IT when I was 18. Felt like I couldn't get a foot in the door, so I went down the trade line. Um, now personal experience has brought me back to this. It's what I enjoy. It's what I've always enjoyed. Sure. Um, who, what sector would I be best to approach with mm. not a lot of experience let's let's put it back on you man what's i mean back to this what do you like in networking right what's what's your special little part okay to be honest i didn't sign up for networking i signed up for web development and web development wasn't going ahead so they pushed me into networking i have already looked at going into software diploma and software development next term um so i would like to find a job that works in with my studies because i yeah. want to keep studying sure mm -hmm. so I just, feel like I can gain more from being in the industry and doing stuff. I'll tell you this, man, like somebody, people, creative people in web design, like in, in the 90s and early 2000s, web designers were everywhere. Now, my it's, God. To it's actually quite rare. Yeah, so to I find somebody that's good and can deliver in four weeks or less is like a pain in the ass. And so I would say there's like an industry there, right? But part of that is because, you know, the environment's slightly more complicated. You got integration specialists, you got back end, you got front end, you got mid end, you got, you got the BAs doing user stories over here. It, the, 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 the thing has gotten complicated, right? Um, but, but to your point is, is you have that experience, write it down. If you have personal projects, highlight those. Mm -hmm. GitHub. Yeah, stick them on Git. Those become like a little portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. it, and if, if write those down, have a little portfolio. Of course. Yeah. And I would say don't hide your trade experience. I love trade experience. Yeah. And there are a lot of tradies also that actually are now bridging across into IT. Look at home automation and security and things like that with electricians. Yeah. Uh, and then also there's people like me who are in IT. I do electronics as well. I have to call on tradies. I have electricians I work with. Like, you know, maybe that's the next big thing in refrigeration. I right? mean, uh, fridges. So you might actually be able to bridge into something. There's plenty of of um, gateways there, I would say. So don't, don't, yeah, don't, and definitely don't hide your trade. I know you probably don't because you've said you're a trader. You like, I like that. I love seeing. Um, I, have cool. I have lots of I have lots of fridges in my botnet. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say um, the ACS is going to be doing a talk with um, an IoT company that has the CEO and the CTO based on the Gold Coast who helped with the cold chain storage mechanism for COVID. Cool refrigeration. So like. You've got all this experience in one industry. Don't just f it off. Mm -hmm. How could you take what you already know and then apply technology to it and make it better? Yep. And, and this comes back to your point about specialising in something. And, and, and actually, I think everyone here has said specialise in something. You've got this career history. Use it. Uh, I, I, do, do you do WordPress stuff? Yes. Yeah, I mean, seriously. I an e-commerce site with over 30,000 products. Put really that awesome. on your freaking resume for, if it's not LinkedIn? already. Put that you on your got a LinkedIn profile. Like, no. create. You don't have to have a real company to make a LinkedIn profile. See, even work makes a company. I know. I know. Like, put it up there. Yeah, go for it. Can I not find these people? That's awesome. In NRL training So you need to talk to my friend Brett. Do you know, you know Brett McCullum? Okay, he is. I'll introduce you. <laughs> This, yeah, is, this is what Steve does. NFTs, <laughs> NFTs, I'm going to connect cards, you. All that stuff. He's obsessed with it. And he's just in Helensvale. And he was just at Startup Weekend on the weekend. Did you meet Brett, Karen? Uh, no, 
He has some fascinating uh, things. Brett's, he's Brett's an in. interesting guy. That's for I'll sure. introduce you. Hey, Brett. Love that. Thank you. Where's Brett? No, I'm oh, he's waiting for the camera, dude. <laughs> oh, Brett. Hi, Brett. We <laughs> love you. Else, we are, we are <laughs> over time. Anything yeah. pressing that anyone yeah, gets answered because these people will never talk again, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, talk to the people at TAFE and get that mm. stuff set up. Because um, I remember it took me, the last time I did it, it took like a week or two just to get a, the emails back and forth. I think Montana handled a bunch of it. Um, but just get that kind of set up. And then if you're interested, come and talk to us. Like, I got to bounce pretty yeah. quickly. But, yeah, same. Some people um, do it at the end of TAFE. Some people do it while they're at TAFE. So a bit, a bit of both. It's up to you. You can do the days whenever you want. Uh, so I'm about to take on two interns for incident response two interns for digital forensics and eventually when Richard gets the SOC working here I'll look at some security analysts. Are you guys looking at, you, you've just taken two, you've taken, I have. Are you guys looking I, your I've, next year budget? Next year budget. Yeah. One. I took one. one. Okay. I'm going to put my business card right here so if you're interested in an internship or work experience come down here. Don't take it so Just take people, a photo. Just take a photo of it, right? <laughs> take a photo of it. Is Pen tester. Take a photo of it, reach out to me. Um, I'd love to talk to you guys. I gotta take off for, for something. I gotta be back at the office for at one o'clock, but um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Cool. Good to see you, buddy. Congratulations again. We do need some time. Yeah. The environment's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> the usual. The usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we should catch up, yeah. I, dude, I'd like. I, I, now no, I can don't just mean, you, don't miss your thing. Yeah, I got um, I I do why, do why, do why don't the four of us. We're, we're across from the street uh, yeah, yeah, from yeah. each other. We're here at Bendel, right? At Urban Bendel. Bendel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Thank you so much. Is it okay? Thank you so much.